Welcome back to the Rock Talk Show. Uh, we're still in conversation with Greg and Rob. Um, we were talking about social media, uh, but uh, you also have experience in the um, film world. You're going to school right now, taking yep. a film. And you had some experience on set in Toronto. Yeah, it's interesting to be here in this television set because I did. I worked for uh, a production company as an art department production assistant, and we did television commercials just to pay the bills. So I worked for Statistics Canada, and on the side, I worked on this uh, production company. And you ran to a, a famous captain. Yeah, I, yeah. I did a commercial with with William Shatner, and my job was to blow off a cannon full of mylar confetti in his face. You know, it was. Uh, one of those weight loss commercials or something like that that he was doing. It was very strange, but he uh, he asked me to call him Bill, which was uh, pretty cool. You know. Bill. Well, you're on first name basis. I am on so first name you know. basis with Captain Kirk. Yeah. The guy's done everything. He's he's sold and who knows what he has done and what he will do. He's a classic. Um, so Rob, film industry, what draw drawed you to that? Because you guys actually shot your own video. We'll talk about that, but. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't do any filmmaking at school. I'm just in the st study okay. of film. Study of film. Um, it's just, I have this, it causes me a lot of stress to know that I will never be able to read all of the great literature that, is, that exists. And film is just a much younger art form. Um, and I guess that I feel like I just have a better chance of viewing and studying the things that I that I need to in that in that program. I mean, that's not the only reason that I'm studying film. I love film, um, yeah. but uh, I guess that's what has kind of made me like. I started in a degree in English literature, and now I've decided to also do a major in in film studies. And I think that's at least part of the reason. It's a new medium, um, all things considered. Yeah, and it's funny that you guys shot a f video for Frequencies, uh, a song called Force Field. Force yeah. Field. Sorry, that's okay. Um, and it was as low tech as you could probably ever get. Uh, yeah. iPhone shot on a smartphone. We were just we had a couple of days off in the mountains, and um, I had kept I kept thinking about the idea of shooting a video myself and doing it for free and just kind of seeing what could happen. And uh, we pulled off on the side of the road in a really scenic area, and we had lots of time to kill. So we set up his drums. He let me. I I talked him into it. And uh, he was kind of a little reluctant, but in the end, it turned out pretty good. We used his phone to shoot and my phone to play the song on, and so I'm, uh, you know, I'm basically just aping along to this recording, and he's playing in the background with a bunch of padding on the drums so he doesn't hit it too loud. Yeah, I love that. I love that. That's control. Like, let's yeah. shoot a music video and let's throw it on YouTube, and before you know it, it's it's happened. Yeah, hundreds of people have seen it somehow. You know? Big process of crew and all all that it's just immediate and it's interesting these days because you know it's like that with recording too I think with music you, you end up being able, there's a lot more control and, and uh, people have more access to the technology that used to be a little bit more specialized I mean it has a bit of a double-edged sword because on the one hand it opens up access for all of us to be able to contribute and to be part of that conversation you know we can make our own film create our own records on the other hand, I think it's uh, it has a backhanded effect of having uh, uh, it allows a lot of people to make music and contribute that maybe sh sh should stay in the basement. You know? Well, yeah, the double-edged <laughs> sword. My video uh, might not be the kind of thing that Rob will ever study in his uh, film class. That's for sure. <laughs> Good way to tie that in. Yeah. So uh, touring. I mean, you've toured a lot. You've had a pretty long career. Uh, I love I love talking about touring because I've done enough of it to know it can get dicey out there. You had a recent experience. Uh, yeah. In BC. Yeah. You know, we had one of the craziest drives I've ever done. I've been touring a long time, and uh, we drove up from Calgary to Edmonton, which is a short throw. You know, it's a 110, maybe three-hour drive, and it took us about five hours. It was a really bad blizzard, and then we got there, and the snowstorm we got, we played our show. But then uh, a couple days later, when we left to go out west, we had to hit the mountains. And, and halfway into the mountains, our car spun around. And, you know, we had gotten on worse and worse highway as we went, and the snow was getting worse and worse as we drove. So we decided to pull back because, uh, you know, maybe when I was younger and a little more fearless, I might have <laughs> gone for it. But nowadays, I, you know, I want to actually make it home alive. So. Yeah, driving in the mountains, uh, uh, my first experiences of going west is like, uh, why are these roads uh, off to the sides? What's yeah. the deal with that? And the you, runway lanes, you, runaway well, lanes. Well, the, 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 what do they call it? The braking lanes. Are, yeah. uh, it's when your brakes give out on your vehicle and you need to like ditch. I'm like, wow, this yeah. is serious. 
it's it's uh, like your travel is taking you around the world. Have you been like you're originally from uh, born in uh, Nova Scotia? I believe. Yes. Yeah. And so you're based out of Winnipeg now, but you've traveled a lot uh, around Canada. Any places you have been to or want to go to? Or? Well, you know, he and I, like Rob and I, we had a lot of success in Germany and uh, Denmark and a few other countries over on the other side of the pond. And uh, it's so much fun to tour over there. I mean, I love touring anywhere. I think it's just a gift to be able to jump in a car or, or go somewhere different and have people actually listen to your music. And But yeah, Europe is, is such a pleasure because they really respect the culture of, of art there is a bit uh, more refined, I suppose, in some, in some cases. And they treat musicians really well. The distances between cities is really short. It's yeah, not like driving yeah. to Saskatoon or Calgary, you know? Yeah. And uh, you get to see things every day that are historic and beautiful. You know, the food is great, the, the beer is amazing, you know? So we, we have had uh, some, some kind of goal this year, I think, to go to Europe again, maybe once or twice if we can, and, and do some touring out there because it's so much fun. It's tough to get out there. You have, to, you have your life back here, your job to balance things. You're going to school. It's, but you owe it to your fans to get out there as much as you can, right? Because you got a fan base. And uh, but the bonuses you get to see, like you said, the history. I mean, that must be a lot of fun. I've yet to get to the old world and do any kind of playing, but uh, it's so pretty fun. Yeah, we get. You know, we're so lucky. I think that that's the thing. I don't feel as much pressure. I feel more like I just want to go because it's such a, a gift to get there and, and drive around. And we've had some some things over there go wrong, but. You know, ultimately, we're li living a pretty charmed existence when we're on tour. Um, sometimes it's hard, but I look back and I think, you know, my gr my grandfather was a coal miner, my other grandfather was a steel worker, and here I am driving around the, the English countryside with uh, with him, listening to music, and we got a flat tire. So you know, it's not like it's uh, it's so bad. The worst case scenario is is usually quite a bit better than than uh, the day to day when you're just working a, a nine to five job. You know, so yeah. we feel pretty pretty fortunate when we're on tour. All right, you know, time flies uh, in conversation. Great conversation with you two. Uh, but we're going to have to wrap up here. And uh, once again, thank you for being thank on the you, show. Phil. Yeah, this is cool, man. And I love your soundstage. Thanks a lot to the camera folks and everybody. Yeah, and you know what? Enough talk, uh, more rock. We're going to have a live performance here on the Rock Talk Show. That's our half hour with Greg McPherson. And we're going to get him the performance off the show in a second. But I want to give a good shout out, big shout out to the crew here on the Rock Talk Show and Shaw for putting us on the air in the first place. So without further ado, here's Greg and his song, Tourists. Sunburned again, laying in the sun by the sea. Sun poison. Nine days off in Texas, everybody's taller than me. Using sign language, making it up. Waiting for a phone call and drinking too much. American liquor, it goes right through me. Much more romantic and much less discerning. And your skirt up and touching your skin. The kids are here in the nighttime cold, standing on the street in your tourist clothes. Everybody staring at you because you walk in.
The proceeding was an independently produced community access program. The viewpoints expressed are those of the community access producer and do not reflect those of Shaw Cable Systems. The program is presented in response to CRTC policy guidelines regulating community programming.